One of my subscribers has asked that I do a ProTune uh, demo to show what the difference is. So what I've got, i got three GoPros on my little Steadicam here that I've kind of crafted. And uh, I'm going to go out in my garden and the camera one over there to the far left is in ProTune uh, medium view and the camera in the middle is in ProTune on uh, wide view so I'll be able to get two cool angles there. Then the camera on the far right, camera three, is just in standard uh, color on the GoPro Hero 3. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll contrast probably mostly the one and three camera and I'll just have the two camera to use for my garden review. So hang tight, here it comes. With protein, it's not about what you get when you shoot, it's about what you do after you shoot. Protein just allows a ton of uh, tonal possibilities, brightening, sharpening, hue, saturation, contrast, uh, pulling stuff out of the shadows and I'm going to try my best to explain that and show that with some of the video that you're getting ready to see of me during an, edi an editing sequence using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. Uh, when you first get your protein video out though you're going to look at it you're going to compare it to what you shoot in auto mode and you're going to think this just does not look good at all. It is always with protein about what you do with the video after you shoot it. It's like having a camera raw image when usually if, you're, if you've done anything with Photoshop you'll know you pull up that camera raw image it looks like crap but when you start playing around with it you start to realize the power. Uh, you'll realize all the things you, you uh, are able to do that you aren't able to do with a JPEG. Same kind of thing with this video and it's, uh, it takes some practice, it takes some work but it will take you down some different roads that you wouldn't normally go down when it comes to color adjustment, hue saturation, brightness, contrast, sharpening and things like that. Um, it's a new little world when you start working with protein video and if you're trying to get into video on a professional level then I think the GoPro Hero 3 does a really good job uh, with what they've done with their protein modes. Take a look, I hope you like it. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute or two to talk about editing in protein mode. Now one thing you'll notice if you record in protein, I've, I've got three cameras here, I've created a sequence. Um, if you record in protein, you'll see that the files are significantly larger than the other files is because there's a lot more actual data there, just like in a raw uh, photo you take with DSLR. Uh, there's, a, you know, there's a whole lot more data there, and you can go back and you can edit. You can get into the shadows and things better. And so that's what I've done here in this little garden video that I shot this morning. But the, um, the, the, the video that I shot that was not in protein... Uh, came out to be about 2.4 gigs in about 11 minutes of video. Uh, both of the ones that I shot in ProTune came out to be 3.664 gigs. So about 1.2 gigs more for an 11 minute period of time. And you can see here oh, close to 11 minutes on this timeline. What we're looking at, this is a ProTune. Uh, this is one of the ProTune uh, scenes. And I'm going to take you back a little bit into what I've done here. I'm in Premiere Pro. And I've got several different sequences because I'm going to do a multicam here in a little bit. I'm going to have the three different angles. I've got them all lined up right now where I've snapped a finger at the beginning of, the, of shooting all three cameras. and was able to line that up so that I could have a multi-camera mix. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you camera one uh, sequence right here. This is a, a protein piece of video. And what I've done, I've come in and I've changed the brightness, contrast, fast color corrector. I know those hardcore editors out there are going to say, why aren't you using three-way? Well, I'm trying to make a fast video. Fast color corrector really illustrates the point really quickly for me. I'm going to turn the fast color corrector off. And I'm going to turn the brightness contrast that I've added off. And when you first pull open your protein video, you're going to say, what the devil is this? Look how dull and horrible this looks. I mean, it's just like so washed out. It looks so dull. Now, by, as a contrast, let's go to the one that is not protein, just the standard out of a GoPro Hero 3. And my Cam 3 uh, sequence is that one. So here's this one. I'm going to turn off the contrast, brightness and contrast. I played around with that a little bit. Fast color corrector. So if you look at the difference... To me, this looks a little more vibrant. It looks a lot more vibrant, actually. There's a little, little more color there. There's a little more oomph to that, right? Uh, so you're going to think right off the bat, wow, protein sucks. <laughs> I mean, really, I look at this, and none, none of that jumps out at me at all. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take these things off here, these, uh, these edits that I've done. So I'll show you how you do that if you've not done that before. I'll try not to waste your time here. 
but let's say we're looking at a piece of protein video I'm back to cam one which is protein okay so here we are one of our kind of washed out areas in protein and I'm going to set I'm, I'm going to first of all I like to do brightness contrast first so I'm going to go over here into the effects I'm going to type in BRI I'm just going to pull up brightness contrast I'm going to pull it onto the video we're going to go over here I'm going to type in FAST for five fast color corrector I'm going to go ahead and apply that nothing's happened yet I've not done anything to it yeah, I can see here this is pretty bright already, so I'm going to go and I'm going to change just contrast right off the bat. And so I'm going to add some contrast to that, and that's looking pretty good. You can see that goes a whole lot way, a long way toward it, uh, making it look like a better piece of video. Now I'm going to add some saturation. I'm probably go up to about, you know, somewhere along in here. And so now, uh, um, if you can see this better, I'll hit a tilde key so we can see it. That looks pretty nice. And, you know... Uh, the protein video, now that's, that's going to be too vivid there at that point. I'm going to have to go back and change that some. But, you know, I'm glad I stopped right here. This is at 5.05.11, so we'll go back in a minute. Now, I'm going to tell you what. We're going to go see you here in a minute in the standard video. You see all this underneath here? I shot this for a reason. These are some Japanese maples, and it's dark back in here. Uh, the thing you get with that protein is you get the ability to go into these shadows and make this stuff come out where you can see what's in these little portions right in here. And you can do it way better than you can if you just shoot it in the standard type video. So I'm going to escape out. Let's hit the tilde. Click in here and hit the tilde key again. It goes back out. So what was that? 505.11. Let's do that with the uh, sequence. Uh, let's go to 505.11 on this one. Okay, so here we are at 505.11 on the non-protein video. Uh, same sort of thing we were looking at a while ago. Um, and so I'm going to go into add uh, brightness contrast again. B-R-I-G-H-T. Let's add that. Let's add fast color corrector. F-A-S-T. And we'll give it sort of the same sort of treatment here. Let's give it some more contrast. And then we can also, of course, uh, add some more saturation like we did with the other. You don't have to add nearly as much saturation because there's automatically a lot of saturation in it. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hit the tilde key again. And now, hopefully you can see the before and after this, and hopefully I've got the video of it so you can see. You can't see much of anything in here. All this right in here, this is all very dark. you got nice, vibrant color, and it's satisfying looking color. And so you, you come away still thinking, oh, I'm better to shoot maybe in the... Um, in standard mode than I am in protein. Uh, but you will, you'll lose a whole lot in the shadows. Uh, it's sort of like with JPEG compression uh, when you're with a photo. There, there's a lot of, it, you know, the images look great until you start really trying to do some things with them and start trying to do some subtle fine color adjustments and uh, you know, adjusting shadows and things like that. Well, same thing holds true with video. And that's why, to me, protein is, is way better if you're going to do these subtle little things, I think if I were editing for film, I think if I were editing for you know something that's going to be on a DVD or a Blu-ray, uh, I'd probably shoot in protein, take my time, go through all the various different points in a uh, video where uh, you know where you need very subtle color uh, improvements. Like once again here, you know, we're looking. You know, I can see up in these trees. I'm not seeing much of anything. Of course, maybe you don't have to. This, this, you know, your focal point on this one is this distance here. But we're at uh, 5501, so I can copy that. Okay, so I just apply, applied an unsharp mask to the protein. Uh, it's, it's still a little softer, I would say, than the other. It may be because of the motion, the way I was moving there a while ago. Let's go to a different frame. So there we can see with an unsharp mask added, there's there's plenty of sharpness there. But the protein does tend to shoot just a little softer, maybe, than what the we do in the standard. But there's just a whole lot more dynamic range. Let me let me get out of this one a second. Okay, so here we are in a portion of the yard that's that's going to be pretty well lit, and I'm going to kind of scroll through a little bit of this. So here's the portion of yard where we were a while ago, and it looks pretty bright here. I'm going to go ahead and put a edit point in. I'll go back probably and change this later. Uh, but let's go ahead and change our, our settings a little bit here. I'm going to click on this one. We may not need to be quite so saturated. No, no, let's try this. Let's take a little bit of the contrast out. Okay, now we're not quite so much. We might actually could use a little more, a little more saturation. Let's take a look at this. We're tilled in. And I have applied some uh, unsharp mask. I believe I have. Let's make sure. Yep. 
thresholds. Don't really want any thresholds. Tilled. There I am paused on one of those frames. Let's play a little bit of it. I show a lot of that side garden, but never show much of this yard. It's a pretty big yard. Uh, have an old. So there you go. Uh, once it finally re resolves into the, the good resolution, you see there's plenty of resolution there. There's plenty of sharpness if you add in sharp mass because protein does tend to be just a little bit softer than the other. But you have huge variations of color uh, and, and shadows and things. And there is that same portion of time uh, with the other one, uh, with the non-protein. Uh, non and this time I'm going to bump the brightness up a little bit. Let's see if we can see those shadows off in the distance as well as we can in the, in the protein one. And it looks like we're going to have to adjust the uh, saturation upward a little bit to give it a really satisfying sort of yard look there. Let's tilt into this one. Okay, uh, again, now it looks pretty nice. Uh, what happens when you start to change the brightness here? You start getting this purplishness in the trees. If you're using, and let's see all down here, that's not going to be present in the uh, in the protein version. Uh, this, that's just, just a little bit of oversaturation I've had to apply. Let's tilt out and take a look at the same piece in the camera th camera one. So here we are again. Let's tilt into this one, and you see not nearly as much of the purplishness in this. Uh, it's just a much more subtle, uh, broader spectrum of colors. So what happens when you start to saturate, you can sort of oversaturate in protein. You can over adjust the colors. You can almost provide sort of a hyper realism to it that's not available there in the others. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this video. I'm going to put it out and let you all take a look at it. Uh, you can go uh, see this garden tour I take. It'll be about a nine or ten minute tour and uh, see what you think uh, comparing, you know, you're knowing what you know, the people who've watched this video rather than just the garden video. You'll know to look for the protein uh, shots as opposed to the uh, to the plain shots. I hope this has helped. Um, just wanted to let you know kind of what you get when you mess around with protein. It probably is worth it. Much bigger files, a little harder on your computer, a little harder on your uh, hard drive. But if you don't mind doing some start and stopping, really taking close look at, looks at your frames as you edit, you'll get more out of it for certain. And definitely if you're doing something that needs to be done at a very professional level. Uh, I don't use a lot of protein on a lot of my blog stuff because it's just, you know, kind of kamikaze, uh, ninja, get it done as fast as you can do type stuff. Uh, but however, in my professional work uh, where I do a lot of things in healthcare, I always do shoot in protein uh, because those things might actually be going to TV or into the movie theaters at some point. So hopefully this helps. Uh, send me any other questions you've got about using the GoPro Hero 3 protein, the W Premier Pro. I'll see what I can do by getting some tutorials out, folks. It's nice to interact with you. Thanks. Good day.